Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and welcome to 2023. Been a little quiet the last couple weeks because, well, I legit took holidays this year, but uh, time to get back to doing videos like normal, and today we're going to be discussing something that I think we're going to be talking about a lot in 2023, and that is AI, specifically artificial intelligence in Blender. So what you see in front of you, this is Blender 3.4, and we're going to be looking at something called Dream Textures. Now, this is basically bringing stable diffusion to Blender, uh, but at the end of the year, it got a neat new superpower, which we're going to show in action in just a minute. But first, I'm going to show case what dreams is all about uh, to start so first I have this uh, default cube and this time we're actually not going to sacrifice instead we're going to use it as our example I'm gonna switch over here into shader mode I'm gonna go ahead and we will just do a, a cube projection for this guy and now I'm gonna go ahead and create a texture for it so instead of applying a texture map from you know the internet or me generating or whatever instead what we're going to use is AI to do so this is using something called stable diffusion we've talked about it a few times on the past in this channel and basically what's Dreams has done is integrated it entirely into uh, the Blender operating Blender operating system. Well, basically uh, the Blender application. So you don't need to do anything really special to get this to work. What I'm going to do is show you two ways of using it. First, we're going to go into the image editor. This is where you would go ahead and load and open and handle textures like normal. Hit the toolbar and you're going to find Dream there once you've actually installed it. Now you have to go ahead and install a model. I have two models installed. I'll show you why for that is later on. But we're going to go with Diffusion 2.1. So this is using stable diffusion for creating the textures. And what you can do is some very neat stuff. So let's say I needed to create a texture map here. Well, what I could do is basically just give it a description. A, um, an old cobblestone road. All right, so this is what we want to do is make this as a texture map. So I want it to be seamless uh, in the X and Y axis. So I'm going to go ahead and say seamless. You can say both axes. You can say individually just the X or just the Y. And kind of that's about the extent of it. The other thing you're going to notice here is it's going to create a history of everything that you did. Now, when you're working with Stable Diffusion, the max image resolution it will create is 512 by 512. But there are some tools in here for actually upscaling uh, the size of the image that is created. I do find once I start playing with these settings, though, that things get a little bit problematic. So I'm not going to in this demonstration. So what you can do, you give the description, you make it seamless or not, and then you click generate and now this is going to do uh, AI magic we're gonna see in a second it should uh, it should spit out an image right here it's not because I'm doing a demonstration. Oh, there it goes all right so here we go now it is basically generating this image from uh, basically going through this 25 iterations and there you see the end result of our cobblestone road texture now it is not by any definition of the word flawless uh, and you have to run through this kind of a decent number of times until you get something that you actually like but for quick prototyping or coming up with textures etc this is a very powerful source you can also feed it raw images you can impaint or outpaint the end result so if you wanted to expand it in a certain direction or overwrite certain parts of an existing texture using AI. You can do those things as well. Uh, you've also got some uh, fine tuned controls over here. You can actually provide the seed. If you've got the seed, as you can see right down here, I can actually generate the exact same thing from the same phrase over and over again. So we do have a history of things we've created. If we don't particularly like this version, hey, just create another one. Now, what you're going to notice is that original version, though, is still available. So for each cobblestone texture it generated for us, we're actually getting a new uh, image here. So here we see this one is it's actually trash. Both of these have been pretty terrible. So I'm going to generate one more time, but I'll show you here as they're generating all of the ones that we've looked at here are available uh, in images available there. You'll notice it's overwriting it because it's rendering it as I go. So let's say this third one is flawless. It's, it's not, but hey, that's the nature of doing a demo. I don't get amazing results. Now, some of it also comes from the specificity of your prompt, and I'm very bad at AI prompts for creating good results, but you can just kind of iterate over and over and over again. Now, theory, this should be seamless. It's not always flawless, but it generally does a pretty good time. So let's go ahead, shader editor over here. We're going to go ahead and add our texture into the scene. So texture, image texture, like so. And now we're just going to go ahead, we'll find this guy. So this is nine, four something, ends with eight. So let's go here, nine, four something, ends with eight. That is our texture right there. Drop it into the color channel. And there you see the end result. Now it's not perfectly seamless, but it's pretty close. So what you're seeing is between these edges, uh, you want it to kind of continue and not have a weird... Yeah, actually, it's it's pretty seamless in this particular case. Uh, and that is nice for tiling and repeatable textures. Now, this, again, is not a flawless texture. Uh, but if you're doing quick prototyping, you don't want to search for a texture. You just want it to go ahead and generate something. Okay, so yeah, that's a little flawed at that corner right there. Again, though, pretty good 
across the various different seams in this texture. And as you can see, you can very, very quickly generate textures. Now, the cool thing here is there are a lot of options here. So right now we're just doing with textures. Let's say I wanted to go into photography here and let's go up here and say um, a scary psych psychotic nun. All right, so what I can do here is now basically specify how this photograph was taken. So instead of giving us, you know, texture style, actually, let's go and add one more keyword here, a realistic. All right, so let's go here. We do not want it to be an extreme close up. So let's do a medium shot from custom position, uh, full color, um, long exposure, shooting is studio portrait photograph, and we will do this in dramatic lighting. All right, this is not seamless anymore because we're trying to recreate a photograph in this case, but you see the specificity you can actually give this for generating an image. So it's not just for creating texture map stuff. And now once you're happy with that, just go ahead and click generate. And now this is going to create a realistic, scary, psychotic nut. Let's see how good of a job it does right here. So there she, she comes. Uh, so yeah, that... That is pretty freaky. And again, the lighting here is because I said dramatic. I could also have come in here. We could have set this one up a completely different set. So I could have gone uh, black and white, for example, and then done um, uh, fisheye lens. And we will have ambient lighting instead. And we're going to get a much different result. So let's see what uh, it generates with those parameters. And we'll use that previous example uh, here. Okay, so let's just let that run out. Over here, we'll go ahead and pick, uh, there is our, oof, <laughs> that is a thing of terror. All right, so we'll wait for that one to finish. So that is ends with 98. Uh, it'd be this one right here, and there you go. So if you see, if you need to add like a portrait or a photograph into your scene, you can create some just absolutely terrifying things. Now, when I started talking about this, I said there was a neat new superpower uh, that Dream Texture actually got. So what you're seeing right now is the ability to basically use Stable Diffusion without having to go ahead and download any of that stuff. You're gonna have to get a model and all that. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. But this makes it all nicely integrated and easy to work with. The other cool thing that we can do, let's go over here, start a new scene. Now, this time we are going Going to sacrifice a cube because well I do every video I'm gonna go ahead and import in uh, an OBJ file so let's go find it uh, OBJ where are you right there all right so this one is in my temp directory it's a simple house model doesn't really matter it's basically giving some uh, depth details for us to work with so this is a model uh, off of Sketchfab I think I grabbed it now the important thing here is going to be the angle or perspective I grab it from and now what I'm going to do is switch into edit mode like here we will grab all of the vertices by hitting A. And then again, let's go hit N. And you're going to notice over here, we have Dream hooked up here as well. Now, this is going to work a little bit different than the image setting. We don't have nearly as many options. And what you need to have is a depth-based model. So basically, just go in here and find the depth version. I'll show you how you can grab those again in just a second. So now we're going to switch instead from uh, texture, we're going to switch this to concept art. And now what we can do is set the environment that we're in. So this is... This is an environment we're working with. It could be a character or a vehicle or whatever. And it's going to use the depth information that it captures from the model on the scene. So it's going to know kind of where to texture based off of how it finds things. And now let's show you what you can do with this. So I'm going to do a fantasy drawing here. And I'm going to say a haunted house in world of Warcraft style. Like so. And now I can just go ahead and say, okay, dream this. It's the exact same process otherwise. The only real key difference here is you do have to set it up to um, uh, use that depth version. I'm going to switch over here to render version. You can see the texture being generated here. And let's see the end result. So boom, there is our generated result. Not the most visible as yet. Let's crank this. So there you see, it has created a World of Warcraft style haunted house. So let's do something completely different. Um... 1950s house in the style of Norman Rock. Was it Rockwell? All right, we'll go with that one. Uh, and again, I got to come back here, select all of the, the polygons there. Now, what you'll notice if you go look at the material of the object you have selected uh, over uh, here. 
I'll get back to that. So, sorry, material over here. What you're gonna notice is it actually generates the textures over there. Now we're gonna go ahead and create a new one and it'll basically create a new set of textures for us. So you can switch between the different versions, uh, but it is creating the materials for us. Again, the results are a little random in terms of what you get back out of this. This is using, again, the depth of the scene. So the way it is orientated in the scene is going to be relevant to how it goes ahead and renders this. Sometimes your results are very good. Uh, sometimes the results are absolutely terrible. The key thing is, you're you're never going to use these in like a final render, except perhaps if you're texturing things kind of like far off in the distance, because you can get results that are definitely good enough. So if you've got the general shape of a car, you can say, turn this into a car. As long as you're going to be looking at it from a fairly fixed perspective, you can use this easily for background materials. You can also use it for quick and rapid prototyping. Now the texture quality is nowhere near what a human would create, but I do think that this is also kind of step one. So we're gonna be interested to see where this ultimately leads. So here is the end result of our Norman Rockwell style render. So again, as I'm up close to it, so let me go out of, that is not ideal. Uh, we've got some issues going on here, but there, well, that doesn't look so bad at all. So again, you could use this for quick rendering of uh, concept arts in the background. Uh, it's using a combination of the uh, depth of the object being passed in. So it is aware of the various different areas, uh, but it is not a flawless texturing solution by any means yet. But you could use this again, far off in the distance works great. Up close, not so great. And the other thing about this is it is very depth driven. So you see, if I go and look, it's, it's literally, texturing it based off the angle that I passed in. But still, uh, it is just the beginning. And again, if you're using this just for texturing things into a certain style uh, far off in the background, uh, it works pretty darn well. Uh, so this is the neat new feature it's got. You can actually do this 3D modeling awareness here. So if you want to go ahead and grab this guy, well, first you're going to want to go ahead and download it. It is available uh, on GitHub. I do not want to make you my default browser, thank you. Uh, you see here, it is updated uh, pretty consistently. The version I just demonstrated is the newest version, released just kind of the end of 2022. Uh, that is what added the first generation of the uh, 3D depth-based rendering. So you basically grab the release version from here. So there are a variety of release versions there. Uh, this does work with Mac, by the way. So you can use it uh, Windows, I believe Linux and Mac as well. Yeah, so you got all those different versions. The Mac version is for both. Uh, versions as well, uh, but the rendering only works on the M1. But you can also integrate with um, their cloud offering, Dream Studio. So if you have a, a key for Dream Studio, you can actually have it there so that it's doing all of the renders on the GPU in the cloud. Uh, so if you have a subscription to Dream Studio, you can integrate that in regardless to which platform you work. Um, so really cool project. Again, just grab this zip file. Uh, and then what you want to do in Blender is basically just go uh, to your edit preferences, and then you go to add-ons, and then you install it like so, give it to the path to the zip that you just downloaded. And then once it is installed, it will be here as dream. Just go ahead and hit the check mark. And then once it is installed, there's a few things to be aware of with it. Uh, so you have to go ahead and install a model. It will automatically uh, give you the prompt to download the one model. You can download multiple models as well. Uh, here you can see if you are imp implemented into, if you have a token for Dream Studio and you want to use the online version, you can enter it here. So let's say you need, you do need the depth version to do the 3D version, what we just showed right here. So basically just come on in here, search for depth, like so. You will find that model right there and then click right here and it will go ahead and download it. Otherwise, when you first install this, uh, it will default to the 2.1, this version right here, uh, which is what I would recommend to use in the 2D mode. So there are a couple of ways to use this guy. Uh, you can integrate it directly into cycles on a per frame basis. Uh, we're, we're not going to do that in this particular example, but it, it can actually be uh, hooked in uh, to Cycles itself. So uh, that's kind of neat. It's a dream texture stuff. It's available right here. Again, goes beyond the scope of what I, I want to cover in this particular uh, video, but you can have it called per frame uh, to generate uh, some kind of neat compound scenes. Uh, you also have it available in 3D version as long as you've got uh, this depth, one of the depth uh, models available there. So you have it integrated into your 3D view. And then as we saw earlier on, it is also integrated into the image editor. Again, all in the tools over here. And here you actually get uh, some more options available to you, such as AI upscaling. So if you want to move beyond that 512 by 512 uh, resolution for your texturing, you can do that right there. So again, it's not creating flawless textures. Uh, that scary none was pretty scary, to be honest. But uh, 
And then when we go and look at like this 3D view, as I said earlier on, you're not going to fool anyone. It looks pretty awful at this level. It looks like decent at this level though. Uh, so that is where uh, I could see this really being used if you're doing quick prototyping or if you're coming to create uh, again, when things are in the background, they don't need to have super precision. Uh, and this, you could spit out, you know, dozens upon dozens of different things, just basically using the same prompt, uh, but a different seed. Uh, and you'll have, you can populate a very fast world without having to create all these different textures yourself. And then of course, if you need to create texture maps, you could be over here uh, in the image editor. And as you saw, you could do fine tune control, uh, various different options. We could do this as a photograph and have all that uh, fine tune details over how it was done. Or we could create auto tiling textures, etc. Again, a lot of what, when you're dealing with stable diffusion in general, it's iteration, iteration, iteration. So you kind of just run through it until you get a result that you ultimately like. Uh, but as you see, this is very early on. If we look back to the here, we're at version 0.09. And this is the very first version uh, that added the depth functionality. So that that 3D integration was just added into Dream Textures. I can just imagine over time, it's going to get more aware. I'd like to see it actually have like a 360 knowledge of the thing that it is texturing so that it will work from all angles. And then we're just going to see over time, it just gets tighter and tighter, more aware of what it does and creates more realistic results. Uh, but even at this beginner level, this entry level that we've got here, uh, it's got a heck of a lot of functionality. And we only covered certain things here. So you've also got things like I mentioned earlier on, uh, in and out painting here. Uh, so uh, you can guide it. Uh, have it kind of fill in the blanks or paint areas and textures kind of work with existing materials. Uh, there is multiple render paths. You can uh, do AI upscaling of your image. You can integrate it into your cycles rendering, etc. And the cool thing about it is you may find that setting up stable diffusion can be a little tricky. This handles all of it for you. You basically install the plugin, download the model, and you are good to go. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, that is Dream Textures for Blender. Uh, it gives you an idea of where the world of AI is going to start assisting developers going forward. And I think it's a kind of cool world, to be honest. But I'm curious what you think of AI, Stable Diffusion, Blender, and all those things working together. Let me know. Comments down below. And welcome to 2023. We'll have more regular updates going forward. I hope you had a happy holiday. And I hope this next year is a wonderful year. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.